SpaceX is now inviting users to join its satellite-powered Starlink internet ahead of a public beta test. Starlink is the current name for this plan, trademarked by SpaceX in late August 2017. The entire project could be up and running by 2024 if the current timeline holds. SpaceX filed two trademarks on the same day in 2017, revealing more information about the internet plans. The Elon Musk-owned aerospace company is now letting people who are interested in the service to sign up to, in the company's words, to get updates on Starlink news and service availability in their area. By filling out an email form with a zip code, prospective customers will get notifications on when or if they are able to join Starlink service once it's opened up. A statement from Starlink read, if you provided us with your zip code, you will be notified via email if beta testing opportunities become available in your area. In the meantime, we'll continue to share with you updates about general service availability and upcoming Starlink launches. The beta is expected to open up in the summer of 2020 or in the early fall, and at that point, Starlink will have about 800 satellites in orbit. Welcome to News Breakdown. If this is the first time you're joining me, please consider hitting the subscribe button and push the bell notification button so that you don't miss a video. If you're listening to the audio version of this episode on whatever podcast platform you're listening on, please consider subscribing as well. It is said that users who successfully sign up before the beta will receive a user terminal that Musk has described as looking like a little UFO on a stick that can position itself optimally to receive the signals from space. Musk has said that the price of the internet, which promises gigabyte speeds with 15 to 25 milliseconds latency, will be about $80 a month, making it competitive with other traditional high-speed providers. So in relation to that particular statement, I would beg to differ. $80 seems a lot for high-speed internet. Currently in the UK, you can get high-speed decent internet for about £35, so that $80 price point seems quite excessive and high. And those are the comments that I have been seeing on various online forums in relation to the price point that has been announced for Starlink. Currently, SpaceX has more than 500 Starlink satellites in orbit, which is well above the 400 satellite threshold needed for SpaceX to start introducing minimal internet coverage. Musk has said that at least 800 are necessary for moderate coverage. The firm aims to have more than 1,000 satellites in orbit by the end of the year and has also been approved by the FCC to launch over 12,000 satellites in total. Collectively, they will form a constellation designed to provide a low-cost broadband internet service from low Earth orbit. However, of course, we have discussed the price point and to me, as mentioned, that's obviously not affordable broadband. In today's video, we will be taking a look at the three key things that you need to know about the Starlink project. And the first key element will be, will it be fast enough to compete with the traditional broadband providers? Starlink isn't just providing satellite internet to the world. It will be providing top quality high speed satellite internet to the world at speeds that rival wide broadband, Starlink claims. This is spelled out in an application to the FCC that SpaceX submitted back in March 2017 to get permission to deploy the satellite system. According to the application, the satellite internet will enable the provision of high-speed, high-bandwidth, low-latency broadband services that are truly competitive with terrestrial alternatives. So it appears that the plan is to launch an initial 800 satellites off the 12,000 satellites to provide a more basic coverage that will then be enhanced and strengthened. Interestingly, SpaceX's plan also involves avoiding creating additional space junk in orbit, which is a current problem, and this is a problem that I do believe will get worse as time goes by. This will certainly be affected by the reduced cost of launching goods or services such as satellites, etc., into space. The next key point is that this project has been in the works for about six years. This project has been planned by Elon Musk for more than six years now. So although it may feel like it's happening out of nowhere, it's actually been planned for quite a while. In November 2014, he confirmed that SpaceX was working on creating advanced satellites to deploy low-cost internet access around the world. So we do know that Elon Musk is a man of his word. If he does set his sights on a particular project, he generally tends to make it happen. And this is obviously coupled with the announcement of the opening to the beta access to test Starlink. 
one of the key elements that we do also need to know and discuss in this particular episode is in regards to the government approval. So the Federal Communications Commission in the US, also known as the FCC, has serious doubts that the low Earth orbit satellite providers including SpaceX can deliver internet service while keeping latency under 100 milliseconds. In a lengthy report on the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund, the FCC confirmed that while LEO, which is low Earth orbit, companies are allowed to apply for rural broadband funding as low latency providers, they should expect to fight. The FCC has also since added that short-term applicants seeking to bid for a low latency provider using low earth orbit satellite networks will face a substantial challenge demonstrating to the commission staff that their networks can deliver real world performance to consumers below the commission's 100 millisecond low latency threshold. Starlink is confident that its satellites round trip latencies up to par for consumers and the FCC. SpaceX also explained that its system easily clears the commission's 100 millisecond threshold for low latency services, even including its processing time during unrealistic worst case situations. SpaceX has a lot to prove and a little time to do it. While the firm has launched at nearly 500 satellites to date, it isn't yet offering a commercial service. SpaceX earned the approval to develop a satellite constellation that offers a low cost, high performance solution to providing fast internet access. So of course we also do know based on previous reports coming out of the USA that internet access is a huge, huge problem in rural areas to a point where other communities within the US have decided to actually dig their own trenches to line up their own broadband cable in order for them to actually receive high speed internet in 2020. So this is something that needs to be addressed and it looks like Elon Musk and co and other companies who are forming these low earth orbit satellite internet services will certainly have a problem to solve. Thank you so much for watching and listening to News Breakdown. If you are watching or listening to this episode and you're not subscribed, by all means, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you so much for tuning in to News Breakdown.